Anyway, to reiterate, we are doing a Niv step. So we're going to want Niv and two colored cards. There's one two colored card here. It is Kitchen Finks. I think we're going to take Izzet Signet over it. Gotta be able to play our sweet gold thingamajigs. You can, you can natural order for Niv, huh? <laughs> That'd be an approach. That'd be an approach to the old Stipperoo scheme. Yeah, Teferi's too good. We can bounce the Niv and replay it for more value. Pass Caleb trophy to FPS. I think we've gotten like three trophies from Pass Caleb decks, which is kind of insane. This season. Usually they do a little, they do a little bit worse because I'm all like fucking tired out at the end of the night. And then I have the tendency to play a little looser when I'm warming up to like my first match of the day. Before the caffeine hits the brain pan. Nice Lincoln. That sounds like about what I would get, huh? Turkey has a habit of wheeling. Maybe we just take breeding pool. We're gonna be a five color deck. Even if the target doesn't wheel, we could probably grab one of these on the on the comeback. Some excellent cards here. We've been passing some excellent cards. We've been taking some okay cards. We're passing some excellent cards. I really like Sheldock. Force Negation is great. I love Chrome Mox more than most people. We're just gonna take the land. Hey, Dak more Thanks for the $20 donation. Dak says, no stip, just a donation appreciation for your stream. Hey, thanks, Dak more Thanks for supporting this old bag of bones. What type of burrito is the just right burrito for a Caleb? I mean, it depends on where I'm eating. If I'm ordering a burrito at Chipotle... I'll do the cilantro lime chicken white rice. White rice, not because I like it that much better than the brown rice that they have there, but it's, but everybody else likes it more. So they, they end up changing out the rice more so it's fresher. And that's the only reason I get the white rice there. And then uh, I get the pinto beans. Ooh. We like a Leovold. Leovold's not a Niv hit, but if we're doing five color anyway, right? And then I like the peppers. I usually have them put a lot of salsa on. And then some uh, some cheese and stuff. Ooh, Signet. <laughs> hey, the Prince thinks the thousand bits there. Shrine's okay. Crux is a Niv hit, though. The Finks wield. How fortunate. How do Stips work? Stip is short for Stipulation Draft. So someone discusses with me, like, yo, would you... How about you draft like this? And then I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. Or, no, I won't do that. Let me jam it. The Atarka did not come back, but that's all right. We don't want the knight. 
put two forests in here. Usually Wake is the, the green-white card that I want. What's my overall win rate on Stipped this season? Um... I, I, I don't know. I would, I would guess. I would guess a little bit. Like around the 60% range. What happens if no Niv? Then we have a sweet five color gold deck. Underpowered open here. We're gonna take the footed strand and hope Crisis wheels. There's that weight card I was talking about. Let's grab it. Or do I want wooded foothills? I, mean, I do want the wooded foothills. We have two green dual lands. Ah. The fetches are so good when you have a, already have a few duels. Ooh, Uro. Uro and Baleful Strix. I think Uro's a little bit more on theme. I don't think either of them wheel. God, Strix is so fucking good. We already have some stuff to do on turn two, though, right? With the Signets. And the fetches are nice with their own. Cool. Both Coalition Relic and Sylvan Carry to it are really nice fixing. There's a demonic there's a fucking demonic tutor in here. We can go find our Niv. I think I actually like Carry to over the, the relic. Just because of how our curve is working out right now. I like Orzhov's Signet. Yeah, I'll take the Signet still. I was thinking we don't have a Boros hit yet, but... Yeah, we can get like Nahiri. Is there a world where this start gets us to fast bond? I don't think there is. Sylvan to force me into green. We'll look at what fixing we have. We have base six sources already without any basics. We were always expecting to be doing a little bit of green for fixing.
Yorian does count towards this step. We do already have a, um, a blue-white card. Oh, hey there. How's the burrito? It's okay. Nothing's as tasty as the first few bites when you're like really hungry. Burn and Tear is a Boros hit for Niv, yeah. We have all these fucking two mana. Two mana shitters. We're gonna have another one. <clears throat> you know what this deck could use? The Goblin Dark Dwellers. Absolutely, fourth queen. They're very chill, right? Hope they put out another album. Could use a Niv. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing. I think we take it over the Ashiok. At least we have a couple cards in here that can potentially win a game. Our curve isn't correct. Like we've built our curve expecting, you know, to get some five drops and stuff. We're only missing Golgari. Yeah, yeah. We saw uh, a couple, actually. We saw Serral, Finn, I think, and Deed as well. So there's not a lot of Golgari options left. I think there's like Assassin's Trophy and... Yeah, that one. God, do I take Trophy over fucking Fallen Shinobi? Fallen Shinobi's so good. <laughs> there's a Simic Signet here, too. I'm worried about actually being able to win the game, right? I think I'm going to take the Shinobi. The Bio would be nice too. I feel a lot better about our curve with those two pickups. Skuller versus Fumarol here. Let's take the Fumarol. in here. I 
I'll still take the trophy. For Nib's sake. Well, someone didn't necessarily take Nib. Sometimes it's just not opened. Alright. This looks like a very successful five color stip we've got going on here, folks. Five color stip. Nothing else about the stip. Just draft a sweet five color deck. We nailed it! Oh shit, what up? Hey, Offba, thanks for gifting us some. Congratulations to Major Viking 1998. Dak over Ashiok. Well, both of those cards can win, but Dak needs a little bit less protection, right? Well, you need to play Ashiok, and then um, it needs to stick around for a bit. Dak comes down, steals something immediately. It has an immediate impact on the board. So I, I like it a little bit better than Ashiok. It also gives you some very splashy wins sometimes. Like when you're putting tutors for a fast blight steel colossus. Is this a pile? No, 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 no. This is a stack. Very similar. Oh shit, what up? Hey, Jombie, thanks for the sun, thanks for seven months. Cruxa Anduro might be a bit much. We do have Dag Faden for looting. I think this looks kind of good. Fire Ice is a fine card, but it's kind of just like more of the same shit. That's true, we could bring the Cruxa back in and play the Corpse Dance. I don't plan to actually bring back Crux in a row, just Corpse Dance them. <laughs> four planes? How the devil did Moto reach four planes? And Holy Diver, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 17 months there. Moto was just telling me to play the Gideon. I think I do want the trophy. Hey, that's better. So Flooded Strain cannot get a red source. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven-ish. Thinking out the carry tin. Oh, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine black sources. We're gonna actually cut a swamp. Blue is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which is enough. It's not great, but it's enough. And then white here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's plenty. Yeah, let's go ahead and cut a plains. What was I doing? Well, I was thinking about an additional blue. Or red was it? Red was at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Yeah, I kinda like getting another red in for the the Chandra. But I like another blue too, if we want to get Uro back. There's a lot of blue in here too. Were we at seven or eight blue? I think we were at seven, counting the carry tid. What do we cut though? Was swamp cuttable? Oh, yeah, totally. Perfect. It is indeed the Caleb D Magic the Gathering show. Nip would have been nice in this deck, yeah. You're not wrong. I'm dating Stream Dicker. Is a trophy day? I agree. I'm not, I wasn't sure what to cut for it. It helps that we have so much quality removal in here already. Vindicate and Dreddy and all that. Maybe Leovold's supposed to start in the sideboard, and Assassin Trophy is supposed to start in the main deck. Leo's so good sometimes, though. Yeah, I'm not cutting Uro, no. I've already submitted, I'm not, I'm not really thinking about card choices anymore. Just waiting for an opponent. I would not play Lotus Bloom over a Signet in a million billion years. Hey Schmitzels22, thanks for gifting five subs. Congratulations to Kronos227, to Ferry and Aris, to Matt87, to Tom Martell, and to Mark Antries. Congrats folks. Oh shit, what up? Shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Also, how's it going, Tom? Been a long time. Hey, the nun thinks the $14. The 
Nun says, successful gold step. 14 bucks for your 14 gold bordered cards. Yeah, thanks for the do donation, the nun. Used to see him in Twitch streams a lot. I mean, he used to stream too. What are you talking about, Tom? He had some sweet ones. So Shonda down take on birds is tempting. I also kinda wanna go just like to fairy bounce the Sylvan and fog that. Chandra and Nisigi would be good if we had something that we were ramping towards. We don't really. We don't have that. I just want to kill the thing. When I play Golos, if I play Golos there, not only does they put an untap with Sylvan Library Courser, which could potentially be bad, whereas this way they have to replay the Courser, but if they just kill the Golos, then they get to attack and clear the Chandra, which I didn't like. It's not hard for green decks to answer a Golos, since it's an artifact. I guess we lead on Omnath here. Leavold stops them from using Sylvan Library, but I think Omnath's still a little bit better. Without your Battle Sphere bearing down. We have exactly enough mana to Omnath. Plus Golos, right? Shambling Vent, maybe? I think it's either Shambling Vent or maybe Razor Verge. Let's 
see a Razor Bridge. The reason I got Razor Bridge instead of the Shambling Vent is a. Uh, because Uro can be pretty green intensive. If you want to play Uro and rebuy it, it takes a lot of green mana. I guess you could make the same argument for Cruxa, though. We actually have a Cruxa in our graveyard. <laughs> They gotta clear the Chandra here, or the uh, Chandra just clears the Biogenic Ooze. It doesn't get to do its sweet, sweet thing. Maybe I should have left the Golgari scene at um. I wouldn't have to shock myself here. What if I kill Sol Ring? What are the odds that they have a Crater Hoof handy? I mean, if they had a Crater Hoof last turn, they would have just won, right? Instead of running out the Ooze. They would have just had lethal. And we know they're drawing an excavator. Are we dead to hoof from now until forever? No, not necessarily. We can, like kill their things. If you take out the soul ring, they don't have the mana for hoof, right? And they were planning on like grinding down the resources. The Golos activation can just find a fucking Emrakul, you know. Uh, yeah, the artist for this song is Wolf and Raven. Wolf and Raven. Great question.
You're not supposed to vindicate. Maybe I'm supposed to dress. Yeah, good evening, Herbie Borm. The Sliven Library's not doing anything with our Leobold in play. You're not supposed to dress them. We know they're going to draw a channel for turn. I'm going to see how fucked we are. That's actually fine. Right? Makes me wish I'd vindicated the elf, because then they couldn't play the Avenger this turn. Resolves. They're kind of just wasting their channel, right? Why are they going so low? Are they just killing themselves? All right. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Fair enough. Emrakul is getting very close, or I'm sorry, to the, to the top of our library. You know, there's only so many times we can activate without hitting it there. Good channel. Yeah, right. Channel is OP. Have you ever seen a card just, like, always find lethal like that? Like, every time. Every time it gets cast. Let's get Alist in here. And Fire Ice. And Bane Slayer. Maybe I want Sculler in. Eh, maybe not. A fast dress might be the only way that we beat Channel Emrakul. Kind of makes me want to leave it in. But I don't know. Maybe we don't need it. Yeah, we saw multiple targets for wear and tear. Real good chance we get to splice or fuse that one. Nah, it's Fairy's Gas. I'm not sure if Crux is meh. It might be. It's a large fucking body. But I think we're either cutting Cruxa or the, the Duress. Crux is probably better on average. But Duress helps you win otherwise unwinnable games.
Not sure about that bottom at all. Okay. All right, come on, wearing Terry. Right off the top, nice and smooth. Playing Golgari Signet here was uh, absolutely awful. I should have played the Izzet Signet. So I can play the Omnath on three. In my head, I was like, ah, Signet, the color of Vindicate. If I draw a Vindicate, I want to be able to tap this Signet. Yeah, right. We had an opponent do that earlier. They had a they had a shark generator in play. And they voted Carnage. And our board wasn't that good. And we actually voted Carnage. It was fucking crazy. We wanted to be up for some mulligans now, huh? Well, I can take the Corset Portal, but that doesn't let me Carnage magically. It doesn't. It doesn't let me vote for the opponent. Yeah, it's true. Ashiok wouldn't do shit here. Ashiok's a perfectly reasonable card, but it's not as good as Dak. Dak's like a in the top fifteen cards in the cube. Oh shit! What up? Probably the second best Planeswalker underneath Oko. Hey, T. Dixon, thanks for the sub, thanks for 29 months. Hmm. Waiting for Nexus 6. Yes, deck over Jace, deck over deck over Karin, deck over all of the other planeswalkers that you also might like, but also suggested as better. It's Oko, Dak, the other stuff. <laughs> hmm. I have preemptively answered your question. Oh man, that's a way better deck target. Mm, he's got a portal. Dress wasn't great. But a Cruxa wouldn't be amazing either. Actually, a Cruxa would be kind of sweet.
You think Dak really died? You think the greatest thief in the multiverse would go down like that? I think it's more likely the deck faked his own death, right? card types. I think we're shy. I think we're short here. Brings us to four card types. <laughs> I think we're still short one, right? We only have eight mana. Fuck! If wear only cost one mana, then we'd be able to put instant and artifact into the graveyard and use it as a ramp to get to Emrakul. But it's not that. So we're dead. So close though. Save a fetch? Well, saving a fetch doesn't do anything. Saving a fetch would give me four life on this turn. If you sandbag a fetch there, then you're at eight less life and the Avengers threatening to kill you, right? Tear the fast bond. I could spend one mana and tear the fast bond, and that would put an instant in my graveyard, making my Emrakul cost one less. So it would be 13 minus one plus one, which leaves you at the same. It's the same. It's it's not helpful at all. Yeah, hey, Dropsy Jones. Thanks for the nine months. Oh shit, what up? The sand is rancid. Like, it needs blue mana for the turn three euro. But they've just had the fucking faster fellows every time, so. I'm just keeping based on that. And guard yourself. Thanks for 29 months. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Huntmaster is on the weaker side. We're playing it because we were doing a nib step. Our curve would be a little a little shit without it. We don't have that many creatures in here. Yeah, right? It is a shame that we haven't drawn Niv yet. Base your whole deck around it. Never even see the name card. You want to escape to the wilds in here? Escape would be good. The issue with escape. There's other, there's other cards that do something similar, right?
There is not a step in the queue. Oh shit, what up? 12 event tickets. What's the EV on these? Let me check real quick. Oh shit, what up? Hey, Zimu is cool. Next to 37 months. them from playing Courser on two. If I hadn't drawn the Cooligans command, I would have just held the Fire Ice. It looks like Time Spiral Remastered Draft is not great, but Sealed is pretty good ED. determining the ED. It depends on your, it varies based on your win rate, so it's just like a guesstimate there, because I haven't played Time Spiral in a while. But GoatBot says, GoatBot says an EV calculator. And you gotta be, you gotta be careful, because like sometimes the EV might include something that you don't care about. Like if you look at the constructed challenge, like it, 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 it has to come up with some kind of a sum for the qualifier points, and so that's gonna matter more to some people and less than other to other people so you have to like adjust it based on how you value the prizes for the ev but it does a good job of just like spitting out something quick for your win rate oh shit what up hey quacks quacks thanks the 47 months I'm literally only talking about EV and Draft Online. You know, that tournament that I just looked at <laughs> in front of you. Burned all our instants. Could just pass, flip, kill Goose. I kind of want to Dreddy uptick. If we earn into a land, then we could Dreddy as well. That'd be kind of nice. Very unlucky air, very unlucky. Have I ever done an analysis on my trophy percentage per draft? Yeah, I mean, you can look at your win rate on Moto. You just have to calculate it. And then you, once you go through all that and and count it up, you can just divide by three or whatever and get, a, get the number of drafts you've done. Adjusting for any like O2 drops in the middle. And then obviously you know how many trophies you had at the end, so it's not it's not hard.
Yeah, with the on a land, I think, is much worse than just passing and flipping Huntmaster. Or running out Duretti. We did get the worst of both worlds. Very tucking Woodfall Primus. Doesn't seem bad to me. Well, shit, huh? This feels like a weirdly close game. For now, anyway. Yeah, they're gonna gum up, uh, gum up the board now. The old battle sphere. But then Wear and Tear gets to clear Courser in battle sphere and leave them with four one ones. Or Sylvan Library, whatever. You're wondering if Disney would file a DMCA request? Yeah, Disney's pretty... Pretty chill about copyright stuff.
we even attack? I don't think you were being sarcastic, Funktalala. I think you were making a serious comment. Wear and tear is an instant. Oh, did you want to wear and tear on our end of turn? Like, run the Dreddy out, make a token? That's probably fine. Then we wouldn't be... Um... We wouldn't be attacking, but... Then you have enough creatures to protect this fairy. Yeah, I like your line better. Now that we're here. Tagging, untapping with Teferi would be pretty good, wouldn't it? Please. Damn. I was hoping they would target the Fumarole. Not looking good for us. Yeah, being at 32 makes the Woodfall Primus matter less. I'm a little bit worried about them just, like, having Emrakul mana at a certain point. <laughs> Let's they draw through their whole deck. Just go, like, Cradle Emrakul. supposed to attack. Maybe it is. We can just get it back.
Right, goody fill, and they wouldn't have tutored for Rapello if they couldn't have used it. They've almost gone through their entire deck. It's like almost certain that there's an Emrakul in their hand, right? And... Extremely Lincoln. I think we gotta let Chandra die here, eh? I mean, the Primus would just come back and kill it anyway, right? And... Trying to find Emrakul. If we find Emrakul here, we can crack the Wooded Foothills, gain four mana, um, power it out, you know. Maybe do something. Didn't get there. Deck them? Oh yeah, I could have played my magical deck them card. Yeah, if you're already splashing blue, for sure, Grey Guy. I think taking the prime time over Ancestral. Um, even if you don't already have a splash, is pretty aggressive. I'd have to be in like pack three and solidly mono green. And prime time would have to be really good in my deck. Avenger hoof, natural order stuff. A lot of times people end up splashing recall and they'll like not have that great of a splash. And if you have to fix for it, you, know, you have to sack a secure tribe elder to go get a blue land before you can finally play your recall, then, then sometimes it's not that good. Like it could have just been a harmonize at a certain point. But obviously it's great if you can just fire it off. You have a bunch of like regrowth effects and shit. Eternal Witness, get that recall back. It's very hard to lose. We are facing an unknown opponent, Goody Film. I guess Emrakul did show up last match. We were just one mana short of casting it, huh? <laughs> yeah. In that game, too. 
Yeah, kind of a bummer after we won the first game. The reason I'm thinking here is because the main is not actually very good. Might keep it anyway. Chandra's not a bad draw. What we actually want is another mana source, though, huh? So we can get this to ferry down on three. Most land draws in the deck are pretty good. The swamp's not amazing yet. There's only the one basic swamp, and there's one more mountain. But forest is good here. Oh shit, what up? Yeah, like literally everything else is good. And then there's three signets on top of that. Hey, Oki Flower, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 10 months. We got some options, huh? I kind of like to fairy bounce their thing. I'm also considering Chandra uptick into Lightning Helix because that gets you closer to a Chandra ult, right? Getting the fairy down now is kind of nice, though. But they didn't have a, uh, there's also the Teferi uptick and then Helix anyway. They didn't have any counters last turn though, like they clearly have six star turn. So maybe this is okay. Oh god. Teferi's so good against suspended Riftwing. How's the evening going? It's going dece. Yeah, you're right, we didn't have Teferi plus Helix. I thought we could from the Wooded Foothills, but I was wrong. built this damn mana base anyway. in a really rough spot. The Chandra's about to ult. They've got a Cloud Skate with a counter on it and this Teferi in play. So they need to answer like multiple fucking Planeswalkers this turn. And we still have a Dreddy hanging out here too. We also have 8 mana towards the 10 for Emrakul.
Oh shit, well Black Lotus is a good start. Hmm. Oh, about that one. I don't know if that's the one they need. That helps. Alright, Banana Man. Treasure Cruise. It's not a bad one. I don't think that digs them out of their hole here. We have 8 mana towards Emrakulm. My next turn. Should I be rebuying Uro here? I should be rebuying Uro. Guess I'll do that. Tap slightly differently. I could still be attacking with the vent, huh? I will have to ready kill my own locket. Yeah, that might have worked. From what I saw, I'd like to wrestle a lot against them. We didn't see much, though. We saw enough to know that Teferi's insane. All the cement. Do I shuffle cards in real life when playing Magic? Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't do it here on stream if it wasn't like a habit, right? If it wasn't a thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice having something to fidget with. Help focus a little bit. Skate looking a little better against this draw. No, I played the wrong land. Got ahead of myself. It's kind of a big deal. They only have four cards in hand. Would be a good crux up.
Yeah, so ideally we turn to the Cruxa, and then this turn we could cold again this command. Make them discard and kill Nissa or whatever. Just get them closer to Hellbent. Swamp will indeed cost me the, <coughs> the Omnath next turn. Are we going to Corpse Stance, Crux lock someone? Potentially. We'll see. We're gonna clear the Nissa just by like corpse dancing back Omnath. Without much going on though. I think it's correct to chill. <laughs> Hippo, thanks to the sub, it's the 13 months. They can certainly activate Tar Pit if they want to. We didn't have this fucking scrub land in play already. Then then flooded strain could be really good. did have a water grave. We could corpse dance. Oh 
shit, what up? Hey, Sad, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 16 months, or 17 months. Appreciate it. Kind of an obnoxious turn for them to draw Jace, huh? Um, If there were Hellbent here, we can get rid of the Grave Titan by bouncing it, and then uh, Corpse Dancing the Crux Sub. They have that one fucking card, don't they? for a very long time. Oh well. To game three we go. Or is this game two? I don't remember. Hmm. That's probably why I conceded. Make a motto. Might be why that happened. Turn behind, yeah. Turn's a pretty big deal. I'm not sacking Wasteland means that maybe I should have just pointed to Vindicate at the Lumbering Falls.
on untapped land. Oh, that works. Do we go closer to fairy? We'll seem pretty insane. Expensive defensive wasteland. Yeah, but our mana base was pretty precious. Just the one black source, and black looks super important. Kind of surprised I didn't go land, activate falls, try and clear five mana to fairy. Shitters, sure. Mm, we can't kill the flyer, huh? Because then we're like ramping them into this. Uh, we don't really need to trophy anything. Okay, cool. Like this is a game that Emrakul's gonna win, which you wouldn't expect when you saw our opener, but it is seeming more and more likely here. We don't need anything for activating, right? Green, green, blue, blue, black, black, red, red. Yeah, yeah, we can just grab vent here, I think. Just plus one in the yard. Oh, that's valid. Valid point. You miss when 187 creatures at drawbacks. I feel like a lot of the classic 187 creatures did not have drawbacks. Unless you mean drawbacks in a different way than I do. Mm. 
Looking at Rital and FD FDK, both relatively drawback free, right? They just not activate the Nissa. Weird. We want an Eternal Witness back, Beast Within, and pointed at the Nissa, I guess. to do anything. Yeah, it gives them a card. I'd be rebuying one of my Titans this turn, whatever. Commentating a lot here. Just clicking, just clicking, just taking the turns, you know? 
Minesweeper is always so click intensive because you have to control both sides. Probably you can just like see what I'm doing though. Doesn't need a lot of commentary, right? Not a nice one, no. Fancy thing that Emrakul, hum. Not a nice card. They're the ones that bounced Emery. Yeah, but I mean, they're pretty close to fucking dead if they don't, right? They're at 17. Emrakul smacks for 13. We have like a crux in our graveyard. We're gonna come back. I don't blame them for bouncing it, you gotta bounce fucking something. It would've been more impressive if I'd called it from the opening hand, could he film? It's a pretty... It's a pretty hard card to beat. Fallen Shinobi is a 5 drop. I mean, it depends on the matchup. This is obviously not the best Fallen Shinobi deck, but we do have, like, the Baleful Strix attack. Bounce it, you know. Get value that way. We also have a lot of removal, so ideally we would clear the way for the Fallen Shinobi. If I, if I was honest with myself, I would say, okay, the Bane Slayer Angel is probably a better main deck card in this deck. But fuck that. <laughs> you ever hit someone with a fallen shinobi? Card's fucking sweet. Mm. Besides, we can bounce our Emrakul. Corpse stands the Fallen Shinobi. Yeah, right? Looted away with Dak Fade, and the opponent's like, phew, don't have to worry about that card. <laughs> Get him. Why Corpse stands main? I just think it's cute with the Titans. We're just trying to be cute with the Titans here. It almost worked. It almost worked one game. So far, our correlation to drawing Corpse Dance and winning has not been very... has not been great. <laughs> the one game we were Corpse Dancing, we, we ended up losing. Upgrading my sound system again. I haven't tried with this current rig. I've got the time now. Mm, a terrible five cards. Ah, this is fucking shit. Oh, they're also on five. Well, they were on six, but we're on the draw. So we're actually even on cards. Results-based thinking, sort of. I mean, it's also like however many games you've played with similar cards and other decks. Dressing turn one there in case they have like a him to truck or a. Bitter Blossom or something, something we just can't beat.
Just one green source away from glory. Still, still just one green source away from glory. Either fetch gets green too. Breeding pool would be so good here. Leobold so good against Ballista. Try this again. If they attack with Blista, we're like, yeah, we take it. If they pump, we take three. Hit them back for three. Whatever. Or Omnath. We have a lot of life stashed in our hand, so we can certainly race. If we draw a removal spell for Ballista at this point, they probably just want to like let it die. Unless they want to triple ping Leobold. Give us a free harmonize. I've definitely killed Leobold with Ballista before. I've done it. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> it feels terrible, but I've certainly done that. What's y'all's pick for like the worst feeling in Magic? For like a play that you like have to make, but just feels terrible. It's not a bad treachery. Any mulligan ever. Grizzlebrand drawing only one? That's a good one. I've had to do that before. That feels awful. Well, this sucks. I'm gonna play the Omnath even though I know I'm not drawing a card. I'm still gonna cast the damn thing. Huntmaster just gets eaten. Way too quickly. At least, at least this can like gain us some life. Ponder with the Narset and plays a Scry 3. Ooh, that's a good one too. Not even necessarily a Scry, right? It's just like, should I shuffle or not? That's a really good one. Yeah, sideboarding in Vintage fucking sucks. I'm with you there. that was worth for them at all. Because my Omnath wasn't doing anything, and next turn they could kill it with Ballista and then still have a Ballista around. Attack first? No, I mean I would have blocked. So attacking first doesn't do anything. Pathing Dark Confident on turn two. That's a really good one too. Man, chat, chat was a lot more creative in their answers to that question. I guess it was just that good of a prompt. I'll just give myself credit for having the best prompt ever. This is an interesting Gear Hulk. Oh, they just don't want the Huntmaster to flip? If the Huntmaster flips, they get to, like, draw a card. I don't see why they care about that.
I don't get to choose, right? Like, I don't want the Ravager to flip. I guess I could play Uro, and then if I draw a green source, I can bring Uro back. I don't know. Do they draw two? No, the second one's up two. It's two damage to target opponent, and two damage to up to one target creature or player they control. So they'll draw one. Yeah, I understand that I can't fucking draw with their arrow. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Remember, this is the game where we were talking about doing things that we weren't happy about, because you have to. If you jam the arrow so that they don't draw off Huntmaster... And there's a really good chance that they don't have anything, and the Huntmaster ends up flipping anyway. I think we just pass. We do have removal in, in here for our own fucking Leobold somewhere. Maybe that'll do something. Correct. We would have to use this green here, and then next turn we could draw a green source and bring back our own, and like, have a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, take two. I would love to pay two and draw and fucking draw a card. Pay two life, draw a card here. I'd push that button a bunch. <sighs> Pardon the yawn. Did not get a ton of sleep last night, but hopefully... Hopefully tonight rectifies that. draw a card to kill this fucking Baleful Strix. They draw two. God damn it. <laughs> ah! If we didn't have so much fucking spot removal in this deck, I would have scooped already. Like, we only have, like, one piece. But it's more than that, right? We've got the, uh... We got Lightning Strike. Three minutes of Fairy would be awesome, because then we bounce Leobold back to our hand and then we get Leobold. Assassin's Trophy, yeah, right? Yeah, and Vindicate. Oh, there's so much. Like every other actual card in my deck does something real. Sometimes hope is the worst torture. You're not wrong. You're not fucking wrong. <laughs> what the fuck is this attack?
Oh, do they just want to be tricky with Maze of Ith? Yeah, like I said, Owe, if there's only like one piece of removal in the deck, then it would have scooped by now. Ooh, there's a bunch in here. There's a bunch of good ones. Chandra down ticks. I think it up ticks. Just no, right? It's not that I'm upticking because I like want to get a card off the Chandra. I'm upticking because I don't want it to be at one loyalty. If I down tick and kill the Billful Strix, then the Kite Seal gets to clear Chandra. I care way less about them clearing this Teferi. Play Golos plus activate. The game has ended. That is not how it works, Mark Chalice. Maze of Ith can only untap an attacking creature. So if the opponent's attacking and we triple block, they can target their own attack creature, because that's the only thing that's attacking. They can't pull one of my blockers out of combat. Yeah, so that's why I didn't concede that game, even though I was fucking miserable under that Leobold for so long. Like, firing off Omnath and not drawing, and Uro and not drawing, and trying to keep my own Huntmaster from not flipping ever, <laughs> so we don't draw them two cards. There was a lot of that, and there was a lot of, I don't know, struggling for water, I guess. Struggling to breathe. Your Hulk almost makes me like some cards. We already have like Coligan's Command and Dak and stuff though. I think we're fine. No, let's do, let's board in this one. Something like that. Because Wearing Terry hits Treachery. And Gear Hulk. It's 
Pride Mage worth? I don't think so. It's just a little situational, right? A little easy for them to answer. I think Wear and Tear is better. Give you that Fuse option. Like, the Pride Mage is never going to be value. Anyone who, who is surprised that I did not keep that opener? Knows me pretty well. I almost kept it. Sitting here on the draw. Deck full of fixing. It. You didn't. Oh, you didn't see the uh, the first hand that I that I sent back. The first hand was like two off color lands and a bunch of unplayables. A lot of fixing in this deck, though. Triple Signet, bunch of lands, bunch of duels. If you pass here, and then you get to block the Pack Rat again. You get to block the Pack Rat and then Cooligan's Command. But the downside is they get more options for discarding because they've drawn another card. So they get another option to discard with the Cooligan's Command. They have more information. And then you run into the risk of hitting a Counterspell. So if you try to be tricky, if you pass, they attack with Pack Rat, you're like, block... Cooligan's command and they like spell pierce you and now the thief hits you and like the thief starts snowballing you know and they get that value going it's a bummer it's a bummer of a time so i thought taking like one or two damage from pack rat was was worth a worthy trade-off get out of here oh man is hellmaster gonna kill a pack rat probably not Chat's talking about how much Scry is worth a card draw. In general, I think people say that, like, it's about 3 to 1. So, like, Scry 3 is, like, roughly as good as drawing a card. But it's not really the same thing. Doesn't directly translate. You think if they'd swarm to the board with rats, they'd be in a better spot? Um, I think they'd be in almost ident an identical spot. Remember that we played two removal spells, right? Why did they leave up all this blue mana? I like hoping I play a counter something for them to counter.
Scry doesn't really care about shuffle effects. It actually gets worse with shuffle effects because you bought him a bunch of extra lands and then you have to shuffle and that'll get pushed back in there. I mean. I should really have healing stuff right now. But I'm bad. Mm. Ravager actually getting value is pretty insane. You don't get those games very often in Vintage Cube. Where you like flip my Ravager, flip my Ravager, flip my Ravager, or Home Master, sorry, not Ravager. You know, Ravager the Fells, this thing. This fucking, this fucking thing. Oh, it is a Ravager! Yeah, I was calling it Ravager because it's on the Ravager side, on the Home Master side. Protection from instance, that's some bullshit. Fairy's minions immune to bribes. Man, this kind of reminds me of <laughs> when Huntmaster was in standard and lapsing triggers were a thing. Does anyone remember lapsing triggers? No, yeah, my ready. For a while, uh, the the magic ruling on triggers was kind of wonky, and they it took them a few tries to get it right. And for a while, like if you forgot your trigger, like say an arrow comes into play trigger, or a, or a hunt master flip trigger is a good example in this case. If you forgot your trigger, um, then your opponent at a later point in the game, could be like, oh, you forgot that trigger. You have to put it on the stack now. And the first time I saw this rule in action, one player had forgotten to flip their Huntmaster, and their opponent played a Zealous Conscripts and took it, and they were like, okay, I'm gonna put this trigger on the stack now <laughs> and flip the Huntmaster. And I was like, okay, I don't think this is going to be the final version of this rule. I think, I think there's still still some bugs to work out here. This doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem correct. Trigger rulings were, were bad for a long time, though. Like when the as soon it was as it was noticed, if it was ever noticed, then it would go on the stack fucking right then, <laughs> regardless of like what phase you were in or the step of the turn, whatever whatever the fuck's going on. Like as soon as the miss trigger is noticed, it goes on the stack. I saw that one get real fucky. Um, one person was hell bent. And then one person attacked with a sort of feast and famine, and they're hellbent, so like the discard doesn't matter. And so because the discard didn't matter, they like didn't pay attention to the trigger. And they were, and then uh, on the other the, the opponent's turn, 
the guy looks down and he's like, oh, this creature land should be untapped, so I should be able to block with it. And they like called the judge and like, okay, whatever. The judge is like, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, we put the that trigger on the stack now. Let's put the sort of feast of famine trigger on the stack. But the other player had already drawn their card. <laughs> So, so the sort of feast and famine trigger that should not have made them draw a card made them draw the Jace the Mind Sculptor they had just drawn for the turn, so that the one player that had forgotten their trigger could like untap their land or whatever. And then they both got a warning. Just fucking nutty. The Demir Signet kept their own Hunt Master from Bluffing. Would have been pretty good. Tilt a Fairy, right? Oh shit, what up? Do we serve with Shambles? I kinda like it. Hey, came in 218, thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 19 months. No, that's not, that's not true, Hodge. That's not, that's not the ruling. the best creature land in cube and constructed it's probably ink moth nexus in cube it might be colonnade it's either colonnade or tar pit colonnade certainly had its time in the in the sun though huh to make it any cheaper. What, am I one away from any? I'm not really paying attention. Can't quite squeak in lethal, so I guess I'll draw with Teferi. Oh, I could have used. I've carried it in. I like looked over my mana base and I was like, oh, no red. But yeah, I should have used and got that signet too. Yeah, they should have sacked the Hunt Master, huh? With the wear and tear on the stack. Could have sacked it to the Woe Strider. Is Woo Strider a playable card? It certainly is. It's good enough for Vintage Cube, right? 